The relationship with mushing is personal to every athlete. Ben Raymond takes us to Wetmore where one couple approaches the sport with a focus on faith. It's definitely been about perseverance and really pushing through and we're both people of faith and that's kind of a concept that is accepted is, you know, the point is to push through. Jana and Ryan Roberts are two of the newest members of the UP mushing community. Well, we were looking for a place that was musher friendly and we were trying to decide between Alaska and here and through many contacts Jana made through mushers on Facebook, we came out here and visited and checked it out and decided to find a home here. They moved to the Wetmore area in May of 2023. There's good people up here and it's a good community. It's not too overpopulated. Yeah, it's really felt like home pretty much since the day we moved. It's just the right blend of out in the middle of nowhere, but you're 20 minutes from town, and then the communities are just amazing, and it seems like everybody has some kind of tie to the UP 200. For Jana, mushing has been transformative. Well, for me, truly, the dogs have kind of been a lifesaver. Um, I was doing full-time ministry work and had become the director of a drug and alcohol recovery facility and was working 60, 70, 80 hours a week. My phone rang all hours of the night and I had really gotten to a place where I was losing myself trying to be there all the time. And the dog started out as just kind of a gentle, turn my brain off is what I used to tell people. It's the only place I could be at peace. And in the transition of being diagnosed with Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune that attacks the thyroid, and in my case, it turns it completely off, to transitioning out of that directorship, handing it off to the perfect replacement, I opened my own grant writing company, and that's what's really allowed me to step into a place of still being in nonprofit work, but having the time and the space to be out on the trail more. And within six months, it grew large enough that I told him to quit his job and come help me. The sport has offered her a place of peace and the opportunity to use mushing in ministry. So it's given us both the ability to be out there with the dogs, but especially using the rescues and having it be more of a place that's a, a peace and a, a joy for me than a, a competitive driving sport. It's really helped me heal internally, I'm noticing beyond amazing healing, and then also being able to touch and impact lives. Both were training for the midnight run, their longest race to date. I try to be competitive. I like to push my dogs and train for a good time. So for me, racing is not about placing, it's about having a training goal and setting the place where I know the dogs need to be and training towards that. He has a team of full Alaskans that are bred for racing, where my team, I have one Alaskan and seven rescues that are varying degrees of Siberian, Mountain Mute, and other northern breeds tossed in. So they're strong and they're steady, but they definitely are not the modern racing dogs. In December, Jana and Ryan loaded their truck and trailer for a trip out west. They intended to race in Wyoming, making a second stop in Montana to rescue two more dogs. A patch of black ice on a South Dakota highway brought their journey to a sudden halt. I mean, from the minute I opened that truck door and saw that the trailer had imploded and told him to dial 911, it just was a matter of finding dogs and figuring out what was what. In the moments following the crash, Jana leaned on her faith as a source of strength. I had to start praising him in the moment that I, I truly, when I opened that truck door and looked to see the trailer imploded like that, I figured I was pulling dead bodies out of every crate. Like there, there was no way in my mind that we had dogs alive besides the two that were in the truck. And the minute I ran around and started hearing my different barks and yips, it was like, wait, we came out of this. None of the dogs were injured during the wreck. All but two were accounted for that night, with one being welcomed back to the pack the following morning. Ryan was seeing bigger picture and that we needed to get the team home, get settled, regroup a lot faster than I did. I wanted to stay and find that last pup. 
But the third day that we were out and had gotten a call that he had been seen, I was literally within 10 feet of him and with a dog he knew, had spent months being raised with, and he looked right at the dog, could have easily known that was his friend at safety, and he took off the other direction. And that was the moment for me that really kind of released the fact that there was nothing we could do. Faced with a difficult realization, Ryan and Jana returned home. Rather than sit out the rest of the season, and despite missing weeks of training, Ryan and Jana found the resilience to mush on. The biggest blessing for me is that all these dogs are safe. You know, they're, they can go on the trail. You know, they, they are excited to see their harnesses and they didn't bulk when I asked them to load back into that trailer. You know, into those same boxes that they had ridden through hell in. There was no hesitation. They followed us right in and loaded up and came home. And that is just a relationship that you can't replace.